Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of this beautiful Hispano Aviation Ultimatum U2 aircraft. It is a joy to be putting this thing together. Uh, last video, we focused all on the rear end. We got the horizontal stabs completed, the rudder or vertical stab, got the turbine installed, tailpipe installed, screens on the intake installed. So that is a huge amount done on the back end of this aircraft. Next thing we're gonna be doing is a huge step. So stay tuned and we'll dive back in to this beautiful U2. All right guys, next big step here is the wings. Now the wings are gonna be a fairly monumental portion of this, uh, of this aircraft. Uh, we aren't doing the gear doors yet. We'll talk a little bit more about that maybe later in this video. Uh, what we're working on in this video is the lighting setup. Okay, that's, that's basically the goal for this video. The lighting setup and then the surfaces. That would be a huge uh, accomplishment for this video. So let's talk a little bit about the lighting system and how we need to set things up. So uh, Sal from Sky Candy posted a couple uh, pictures uh, a few days before I recorded this video. And uh, it's of a customer's video, uh, aircraft. Can't remember the guy's name. Might have been Ivan maybe. Anyways, I'll, I'll put the pictures up here. Beautiful, beautiful light. And this is kind of what we're mim mimicking for the ultimatum and the goal. So let's talk about the geometry of all of this. So we've touched a little bit on this stuff when we were talking about the gear doors and this will kind of solidify everything. So what I did here was I, um, we needed to find the angle that those wings sit at. Now, the only thing that we have on the wings and the fuselage that are perfectly perpendicular to the center line of the aircraft would be the wing tube, which is awesome. So what I did was I took a square, put it in the wing tube here, had it squared off, took my angle finder, found the angle, and the angle is nine degrees. So from a 90 degree angle, nine degrees brings us to the correct angle for the root of the wings. So that's just naturally when it gets installed in the, uh, in the fuselage, that's how they're going in at. The wing tube is at um, perpendicular to the center line of the aircraft. So what that does is that gives us our angles for uh, gear doors, for lights and things like that. So that is just some of the simple geometry we need to figure out first. And the whole reason for that is when you're setting the lights up, you want them to face forward, right? You don't wanna follow the angle of the wing, otherwise those lights are gonna point nine degrees out, which doesn't make a lot of sense. So next thing we need to figure out here, and this is why this picture is so phenomenal, is where we're gonna put those lights. Now, uh, I was initially thinking about putting them in line with the aileron opening here, but I think that's gonna to be too far uh, in compared to where I want them. So I'll show you where that is relative on the wing. So from the underside here, you can see that opening is right in this area here, and on the entire wing, we're about halfway, so that'd be the midpoint on the wing. And I think what I'm gonna do is come one former or one rib over, and we're gonna put the lights in this area on the wing, which I think is gonna be just a little bit better, a little bit more skewed towards the outside. So what you're looking for here when you do these, uh, the light lenses as an example, is you want those lines or edges of the opening to face forward. Okay, you don't wanna have them run like this, cause then if you mount your lights flush with the back of that, they're gonna face outwards at a nine degree angle and that's gonna look really silly and not work properly. All right, and Sky Candy also sent us three different sets of lenses because we are, they haven't done up a set yet for the ultimatum. So this will be kind of the deciding factor. They sent us number option number one, two, and three. Uh, option one is kind of the skinniest one, two is medium, three is kind of wide, large cord wings. And uh, number two basically fits this plane perfectly. So this is the lens set that we're gonna use, uh, which is great. So Nez, don't do that. 
So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna build uh, a bit of a jig over there. So putting the straight edge on the table, getting another straight edge at 90, and basically getting our wings kind of set up so we can start uh, working on how the cutouts are gonna be set up on these wings. All right, so I was uh, getting this all set up on my straight edge using my angle finder to measure the wings and all that kind of stuff. And then I realized, hey, this, wait a sec. If we just put the wing tube in there, our wings are gonna be at perfectly the right angle. So we've already got a jig set up. And then as long as we have the wing tube uh, perpendicular to the straight edge here, or the, the, there's lots of different stuff going on here. Anyways, now we've got everything set up. So this, uh, this makes things a lot easier, which is wonderful. And then we can take our straight edge here and run that across with our other straight edge and uh, that's gonna be wonderful. So anyways, now what we can do is we can start uh, putting some tape on the wings and getting that stuff figured out and, uh, and figuring out our position of where everything's gonna go. All right, so we've got the wings laid out. We've got uh, some weighted balls holding them down. Uh, took a square here and ran it on the wing tube and basically got our, uh, our 90 degree straight edge here set up and then our other straight edge runs on that. So now what happens is when we come to our lighting position, and we run a straight edge like this, we will get nice straight lines that follow the center line of the aircraft. So the measurement I'm using here from the root leading edge to my measurement is 20 inches exactly. So we're gonna run our lights past the 20 inch mark so now what I need to do is just figure out kind of what shape we're going for here. So I'm just gonna do some, some rough sketches, probably in pencil first. And uh, then once we were happy with that, then we'll move on to uh, probably doing it in Sharpie. And then we'll make a template that we can use on either wing. And uh, I think that's, that's what we're doing in my brain anyways. Okay, so our setup on this aircraft is we've got a one inch light and a seven eighth inch light. Now what I'm trying to do is figure out how much space we need our opening to be to accommodate both of these lights. The, the one inch one goes towards the root of the wing so we get the most depth, but that is what we are after. So we've got the lens here and what I've done is I put the lens on the wing like this, get the root side kind of lined up so we're close to the edge so this is as as far out or this is the position that we can run this portion here and then what I did was take a look at this side and if we drew a straight line kind of back to our piece back here that is where we can have the furthest out position so we've got this much room to play with now what I'm going to do is take my lights measure this spacing and see if that kind of lines up. So we can also just do this. We're gonna have our lights positioned like that and like that. So that will definitely be enough space. We can tighten that up a little bit. There we go. So that should work out good. So what I'll do is measure this distance here now so we can make our opening basically that wide right about here and that should work out well so what i'll do now is draw my other line this direction and uh, we'll see how we want to shape the uh, the the center part uh, the design i want is the top edge here just like the pictures that we saw so the top edge here parallel with the cord or the leading edge of the wing and the bottom side is going to be uh, a little bit more open. So I needed to find something that was the right dimension. So I took this tiny little ruler first, put that on my straight edges and drew my line across. And I think that is too much of a return. So then I took a wooden carpenter's pencil, put that on there, drew my line, and that's what I'm happy with. So we are going to eliminate this line here. That's no longer 
good. And this is our cutout for the top. Now this is repeatable, which is important because you want to be able to match this to the other side, of course. So now we're going to do the other side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to flip the wings over and we're going to get our straight lines drawn again. And then we'll figure out what we're doing for our return line. All right, so we flipped the wings over and we've got them all squared off and everything just like we did on the top side. And what we did here was repeat what we did on the top side to get our baseline done. We need Trusty's help here because uh, this is complicated stuff. So we drew our straight lines again and uh, drew our uh, line here with the carpenter's pencil. So that's all matching exactly the same. Now, one thing we have to remember is that our lights need to be facing forward, right? Not this angle. So the top side, we're gonna do this cut on the top side. On the underside, we're gonna do this cut here. And what that's gonna do is we've got two different steps because we've got two separate lights. And then our lens itself will cover that entire step. So we're gonna make a nice uh, shape. Probably that follows the cutout, something like that. Might go straight across, not sure yet, but uh, that should work out perfect. So top side will be a nice little cutout, hardly anything visible. And actually from the top side, you won't even see the lights physically by themselves. Because if you can imagine on the top side, if this is the underside that we're looking at with the steps here, on the top side, that's gonna be like that. And you're not gonna see those little step downs on the underside. So that's gonna be a really cool effect. I like that. I think that's a really great way to do it. Now, alternatively, we could do the exact same cutout here, but then our structure that we put inside the wing would be recessed. Now, the problem with that is uh, the overhang and overhang on top and bottom would restrict some of the light. And, uh, I think it's a better way to do that step. I think it's gonna look awesome, just like those pictures. So now we need to do the same thing on the other side of the, or the other wing, and uh, then we will be ready to cut, cut, snip, snip. All right, guys, it has been uh, 24 hours since we've marked these wings out, so it's the next day. And I did that just intentionally, just to allow myself some time to think about this and make sure that we're happy. I'm happy, everything's good to go. So what I'll generally do in this case is, I usually like using this Dremel bit here, this carbide bit, it's a skinny one, like uh, one eighth of an inch type size. And uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll plunge it in there and then just work towards the edge. You could also use a cutoff disc as well too. Um, both work fine. What I like about this one is it allows me to, to stay away from the edge, then we can go back and clean up the edges with it. So that's why I like using this one. And uh, also it's easier to use with one person in a vacuum to suck up all the dust. Now uh, I had one person reach out, uh, I can't remember the name, but uh, one of the questions from the last video was, on a turbine setup like this, where you've got lots of overhang, how do you drill the holes for the turbine? That's a great question, because if we're using a regular drill, our position would have to be about here, okay? And um, so what I use in this case is this angle attachment. It's like a 80 degree angle attachment. Now I have no idea where this came from, uh, my friend Daryl actually ordered one of these and uh, they, I think he actually accidentally double ordered. So he just gave this one to me. This is like one of those wish kind of finds, right? And uh, it's a cool tool, only works with the, uh, the drill bits that have the, the hex bit thing attached to them. But uh, pretty nice little tool for things like this uh, or getting into tight spaces. So it's uh, obviously quite versatile with how you can position your drill. So that's what I used in this case. Now, if you did have even less room, you could use a pin vise. Now this obviously would be a bit of a pain because it's gonna take a lot of turning, but I have done that before uh, and I've used this tool to drill a pretty big hole. And in this case it would have to be four or, or six holes or whatever you're using to mount your turbine. So there are things like this that work too. Obviously the, uh, the, the actual power drill is much easier with that attachment. So it is time to uh, make the cutouts in the wings. Let's do this. All right, so we got one of our cutouts done here and uh, this wing is a really good candidate for these leading edge lights. Uh, some wings like uh, 
Um, the last one I did was my Huracan. Uh, some wings, when you cut into the leading edge like this, you could take the entire wing and just like flop it around. Uh, the Hispano Aviation, the Ultimatum is incredibly strong. And you've got this one rib that runs all the way down here. And uh, our other ribs that go front to back are there. So this is actually still really strong. So once we add in our, our woodwork back in, it's gonna be incredible. So anyways, that, uh, that worked out really well. I'm happy with that. It's gonna look slick. So I did end up using my, uh, my plunge bit that I was telling you about, but then I also used my cutoff wheel just to finish things up because what was happening was the green tape that we had on here when I was using my plunge bit it was kind of bunching it up and wasn't really making it clean so I, I did my uh, my first cut and got rid of the entire piece and stayed a couple millimeters away and then I came in with my cutoff wheel and did all of my angles now what we'll do is we'll go back and we'll touch this up with a file because we've got areas like this right here where this still has a bit of an angle on it and it needs to be sanded down near the tip there to be more of a straight line. So we have to spend a little bit of time cleaning that up and uh, we're gonna also have to do the other wing as well too. So we'll get that one done and then we'll start uh, thinking about our backing pieces. All right guys, so just working on the backing here for our opening. So what we're doing is we're doing the back pieces first like this like this and this piece probably can't get it in there so like that and then this piece probably can't get it in there without knocking the other one over but sort of like that so i like the way this is designed with this overhang on the upper side because it covers all of this stuff really really cool um, that's great. So anyways, that's kind of what we're doing. So we need to cut these pieces out of uh, plywood and get them uh, set up to glue in. So we're going to glue these back pieces in first. And then what we're going to do is tomorrow we'll do the side pieces uh, along here. And then when this is all done, ideally what's going to happen is these pieces are going to end up flush with the skin and they're all going to get painted black. So everything in here is going to get painted black. And then when our cover goes over top, it's just going to be such a sleek look. But uh, that's kind of what we're after. So I still have to do the ones for the other side of the, uh, or the other wing, sorry, not other side. So maybe I can take these and just flip them in a mirror image. We'll see. But uh, this is essentially how I do this. And all we're using to uh, do our templates is the Electron Gearbox. Nice thin cardboard, really easy to work with. And uh, this is awesome. All right, so the, uh, the cardboard only gets you so close, right? So um, what you need to do is cut these pieces out with wood, whatever you're using, and then just do some final shaping. And even once we get these glued in place, there'll still be some shaping to do on the top edge here with the Dremel, really, really fine work, just to make sure that we've got a nice angle on that wood. So, um, but this is really, really, close and we're in the right wheelhouse with everything here. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna install each of these pieces uh, just roughly like they are. And I'm gonna put a black Sharpie mark on the uh, the underside here so we know where to put our high saw or epoxy, whatever you're using. And uh, then we'll put these pieces in one at a time. So we're gonna put this piece in first, then this piece, then this piece. And uh, we're gonna tack weld it or spot weld it in place with some, uh, probably some medium CA, just to hold them in place because they're not very solid. So we'll put some high saw on there, install them, put a couple drops of CA, and that will be perfect. And we'll let those cure till tomorrow. All right, and once again, it is the next day and our backing on one of our wings is done. Also went to the paint shop today, the automotive shop, and we got a color match done on the wing color, on the gray color. So we'll be able to do our gear doors and all that stuff and get a beautiful match to that. So we're gonna get our backing plates done in the other wing, but the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do our side plates here and uh, just get those going so the glue can cure and we'll uh, let that glue clear, cure while we're doing the other wing. So uh, there's quite a bit to, uh, to do on these side pieces, but we're basically following the same process. Gonna take a piece of wood, uh, stick it up in there. And uh, this side is actually a lot easier because it's just a single piece. 
uh, like this, trace it out and you're good to go. This one you have to do a bit of a notch up here for the, uh, the part that goes back. So um, yeah, not, not overly complicated, but basically exactly the same process. And once we get those glued in place, we'll move on to the other wing, repeating the same process. Okay, so we've got our side pieces all done now and those worked out really well. So now we just need to leave this wing to cure and do its thing. Once it's done, then we can install our lights and then start to work on our lenses. So we have to give that a while to cure. While we're waiting for this, we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other wing. All right, so we're ready to get uh, our light openings done here. Now I've used my step drill, this one here. And we do need to go all the way to the very end, which is seven eighths, but we can't do that because we start to get into the other uh, structure in the wing. So what I've done is gone as far as I can sort of, and uh, we'll just open this up with a Dremel, but uh, really that circle needs to be, uh, you can see there quite large on that face plate. So we're gonna be Dremeling out quite a substantial area, but uh, that's the next step here in getting these fit. Okay, so we've got both wings ready to paint. So we have done our holes here. They're a little bit bigger than the, uh, than the Sky Candy lights. We've got some positioning and they're fairly easy to get in and out. So the next step in this whole process is to paint both of these areas black. So we're gonna paint all the exposed wood and, uh, and wing skin area black, uh, let those dry, and then we will fit our lights into our holes. All right, so we've got both of the openings painted black. We put two coats on there and uh, that is good. We're waiting for that to dry, so we just wanna leave that alone. Now, if we look at the lighting setup here, now this is the way the Sky Candy lights come. So they come with the shrink tubing all the way over top of the, uh, the reflector. And because this is so tight, what I did was just cut the shrink tubing off back to there, and uh, that won't be a problem at all. Um, all the electronics are still protected on the light with the, uh, the remaining shrink tube, but now our opening is, uh, it, or the, the light's easier to get in the opening. So anyways, those lights are the next step to install. Now the wiring harness itself, we've got um, the wiring harness lead here. So our power and everything comes through this lead, splits off to the nav lights, and then our voltage regulator, which is our Castle Creations BEC, that drops it down to 4.8 volts, which is all the Sky Candy lights need. And uh, then it, we come to our two uh, Sky Candy lights right there. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna mount this assembly here um, in the aileron opening, probably probably on the front here, I would imagine. And then our leads are gonna run through and come through here. So that's uh, what, what's gonna happen with the, uh, the wiring harness. And uh, so next step, as I mentioned, we are gonna glue the lights into the wing. All right, so we've got our lights installed. Now they are just tack or spot uh, stuck in place with a drop of medium CA. So that's what's holding those in the current position. We've got our wiring harness. And uh, the nice thing about the wiring harnesses here is we can plug this into a, a three cell, four cell uh, LiPo battery and provide light to the lighting system. So what we can do now is start working on getting these lined up. So kind of the easiest things initially to do is get it as level as you think it can be. And then if you look at the yellow in the reflector, so that's the actual LED itself. And if you start to get skewed, to one side or the other, that yellow changes. So you wanna try and get that yellow as close as possible matching those two. Now we know that we're pointed straight when we're uh, parallel with the, uh, the cutouts that we've done there because that's all of our measuring and everything. So the other thing we're gonna do is now that we're kind of happy with position on those things, I've got the ultimatum set up over on the other side of the shop. So we're gonna put these wings on the actual aircraft and uh, plug in some power. And then from back here, we'll be able to uh, take a look at it and uh, confirm that we are pointed straight uh, left and right and straight up and down on all four lights. With sunglasses on, of course. All right, guys, so we are uh, gonna plug these guys in and uh, see what they look like. So the camera is not really centered on you guys, I think 
this will work. There we go. We got one and two. So I don't have my sunglasses on. Actually, I'm going to put my sunglasses on, I think. Now, no word of a lie, when these things are on and you're in an area like this, you need your sunglasses on. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah, as far as position goes, that is what we're looking for. So um, it's gonna be hard to show you on camera, but when I've got my sunglasses on, I can look at each individual light and I can see that uh, as far as position goes, we are good. We've got a nice equal view on all the different lights. So that is perfect. So what I'll do now is I'll take those wings off carefully and we will finish gluing those lights in position. All right, so we are getting ready to work on lenses. Now, what I did was lens number three, which was a wider lens uh, that actually uh, formed to the leading edge a little bit better. But uh, what I wanted to do was take lens number two, which was a little bit tight, and I heated lens number two up and uh, remolded that to the, the leading edge. So just took my heat gun, held it in place like this, get it nice and warm, and then just push it down with your hands. It's actually quite simple and straightforward to, uh, to remold these lenses. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to tape the lenses down like this, and then we will uh, mark out our outline with, uh, with thin paint masking tape. So we'll do our outline, our cut line, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so we'll use yellow masking tape. The yellow masking tape, I don't like to use it very often because it's too sticky and it peels stuff off. But in a situation like this, it works well because it will hold the lens in place very nicely. So we just do both sides. So with that done, what we want to do now is we want to mask out our uh, our cut line. So what we're going to do is we are going to use this masking tape here. It's just a uh, um, masking tape. I think it's Tamaya stuff. Anyways, and we're going to do our line where we want to cut. So when I cut this masking tape off the lens, or when I cut the lens, I'm going to make this masking tape fall off is my goal. Right, so our actual cut line here when we pull this lens off is gonna be right on the edge of the masking tape. And then what happens afterwards is that's gonna be the piece that we glue on, the overlap, and then we'll paint that overlap piece and it will look beautiful. All right, so we've got our lenses all cut here and they turned out nice. I just, uh, the, the back ends there where they, uh, they come to a point, I just uh, used my side cutters and snipped those off. So I've cleaned these up with alcohol, so the insides are nice and clean, the outside's not worried about right now. And uh, what we're doing here is we are going to use E6000, which is a goop product, but uh, it's a little bit thinner and we're gonna get these glued into place and taped into place. Now, when you glue these in place with E6000, you don't need to worry about it coming out of the lens because that just rubs off afterwards. And then we're painting these lenses uh, where they touch the wings, okay? So uh, what I'm gonna do is get my E6000 run on here and uh, we'll get this glued in place. And we'll tape it down with masking tape and then we need that to cure. All right, and there she is all taped in place. Um, it was kind of tough to, uh, to get the E6000 all laid out. What I did is I just had the lens flipped over like this, uh, put a bead around the perimeter, stuck it on there. I didn't go too wide on my bead because I didn't want, uh, I wanted to prevent as much as possible going into the light housing. Um, so hopefully that's good. We won't know until a couple hours goes by and we can take that tape off. So one wing's done. Now we'll do the same thing to the other wing. Okay, so while we are waiting for the main lens to uh, cure, I uh, decided it was time to work on the tip lights. So we had to put a hole that's appropriate to the size needed to install the light, which we've done. Uh, just fed the wire, and that wire plugs into the harness uh, that we looked at earlier. 
So that's pretty straightforward. We just need to get the light wired to this location, which we've done. And then I took one of the, uh, the lenses that was included in the lens sheet from Sky Candy and kind of cut and shaped it out. So this is the lens that we can install on top of the light. So pretty straightforward. So we're gonna use Shoe Goop for this as well too. We're gonna get the lens cleaned up a little bit more. And uh, so what we'll do is we'll glue the actual LED in place with some CA, and then we will install the uh, lens cover over top with Shoe Goop and tape that in place as well. All right, and we'll just prove everything works here. So we plugged a battery into the harness and our lights are working and our uh, marker light is working. So I've checked both of the uh, wings and they both work awesome. So uh, the lights on the wings are done. Uh, what I did here was just wrap everything up with electrical tape, put it one drop of thick CA, and some kicker to hold it in place. And that's the wiring harness in there. So from here, all we need to do is run one, one wire to the root and we can run that with our aileron string there as well. And we've done the same thing on this wing, identical. So I've checked the wiring already, it's all good. And we've got everything uh, bundled up and stuck in place. So wings, as far as the lighting system goes, is almost done. So in the next video, guys, we will be finishing up the wings, uh, or at least the lenses, and that step's going to completely finish off the leading edge lighting system. And what we're going to do there is we're going to tape off the lens, and then we're going to paint the lens, and it just absolutely makes it pop and look beautiful. So uh, that is the final step in the wings. But to answer our question, so when you break your wing, now what? Well, when you break your wing, what you do is you fix it with a beautiful lighting system. So that's it for this video, guys. Uh, video number three in the Ultimatum series, and uh, it's been a fun build so far. So we got part one of the wings done. Part two is gonna be the next video, and we will start to focus on our uh, finishing up the wings, first of all, and then we'll probably have some gear door stuff in there as well too. And that's gonna be fairly technical on the gear doors because we have to make the gear doors. Uh, we've decided that we will be making the gear doors and uh, totally fine. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be a neat experience, but I think I've got it all planned out and we are good to go now. So uh, thanks guys. Little pause there to put some, uh, some merch on. So um, if you look down in the video here, you'll see that we now have the trucker hat uh, listed on our spring site. So uh, there's been some hat issues over the past couple weeks. Like I've created the hats and then spring took them down and I think it was something to do with my logo and I emailed them, I'm like, this is my logo. So anyways, I think the hats are good to go now. Uh, the links are both fixed down below so you can get this hat or the, uh, the snapback full full hat. So if you look down in this video um, at the bottom or right below the video, you'll see the, uh, the spring shop. So that's where you get the hats. I don't stock them. So anyways, guys, that's it. Thanks so much for watching and joining me in this build of the ultimatum from Hispano Aviation. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video.